Well, Taste Holdings today celebrating its move to the main board of the JSE. Carlo Gonzaga, Chief Executive of Taste, with us in studio. Taste, uh, uh, Carlo, rather, five years and I think two weeks ago you listed on the Altex. Why the move to the main board? Yeah, that's right. Um, look, it was always one of our ambitions to move the main board. We, d we just simply, five years ago, didn't um, qualify from a financial perspective, being quite a young company. So it was always on our roadmap. We'll set a result in a recessionary environment and our maiden dividend that, uh, that we thought that, uh, you know, now is as good a time as any to move to the main board. The choice of the general retailer sector, a lot of analysts have... Uh have l would have loved you to have been in the restaurants and, and pub sector so that you could be <laughs> compared to, to famous brands. Uh, why the general retailer sector? To be quite honest with you, it wasn't up to us. Um, it's really a JSC requirement, which is dictated to by the fact that the majority of our revenues come from our jewelry division. Um, well, the profits are a little bit more evenly split, but on the revenue basis, the majority comes from there. So that's really the, 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 the purpose behind it all, the classification. Digging into your food division, uh, just uh, reading through your annual report this morning, uh, you do make mention of the fact that Sonoma's, which is one of your newer acquisitions, will impact materially on the numbers in this financial year. Are there many synergies to be had between the San Almo's pizza business and the Scooters pizza business? Yeah, well, remember the San Almo's business consisted of a, of a sauce and spice plant. So certainly in that respect, if you view San Almo's as the, as the entity that we bought it, we're now making 100% um, of all the premixes that go into our dough for scooters, as well as all the sources for scooters and maxis. So in that respect, you can, you can imagine it's a substantial increase on the San Elmo's business itself. And we also cut, um, certainly you know, last year only had four months of San Elmo's, five months of San Elmo's. This year we'll have a full year. Um, and we had a lot of, because it's quite a similar business to scooters, a lot of the, the expensive overhead costs that it had, we just absorbed the entire business into, into taste. Continuing with that uh, centralized kitchen, the food services division, which you've been growing out over the past uh, 12 to 18 months, that strategy has paid off well for famous brands and others in the space. What scale would you like to get that to, and what contribution would you like that to make uh, towards the, the bottom and the top line, I guess? Yeah. So, you know, the, the, there's quite a few blocks to that vertical integration. The one is manufacturing, and we, we, we've, we've got um, a fairly small penetration into that because we don't do, for example, hamburger patties for Maxis yet. So we still got a bit of scope in manufacturing, and there's naturally also scope within distribution, which we do none of at the moment. Um, we've got a small plant in Cape Town, a small warehouse, but we only distribute to San Elmo. So the, we anticipate that probably about a third of our revenues in the next two years can come from what we call that food services division, um, at least that. Just looking uh, ahead, might we see you expand into a fourth food brand? Might we see you move into another direction given that you have a food business coexisting with jewelry? Yeah, we, we've been quite specific and we've said that for the next 24 months, we're quite focused on uh, on building that back end of our food business, which um, that's the one side. We certainly are looking at acquisition as part of um, the growth in either our jewelry or our food business. but. Quite honestly, I don't think that we are see ourselves next 24 months going into a separate category. So it's really a focus on what we've got at the moment. Further afield, international expansion, I noticed that you have got a handful of stores in Namibia, Zimbabwe, Swaziland, Lesotho. Any plans to extend that uh, perhaps into, into other SADC uh, countries? Yeah, we, we do. Um, although I, I would, if I were to classify us, we, we, we passively look at cross-border at the moment. So whereas previously we just completely said flatly no. Um, so we don't actively go to trade shows, etc. But if someone comes to us and they want to open there and we think the market's big enough and will sustain it, then we'll look at it. The trading conditions you've seen in the first four months of this financial year, without going into details, we are seeing uh, economic data which suggests that consumers are under significant pressure at the moment. Is that what you're seeing in your businesses? You know, in, in both our businesses, and I said this when we release our results uh, a month or so ago, is that um, we're certainly seeing, we, firstly, we're happy we're in the value sector in, in all our brands. Um, we're seeing an unpredictability of spend. So certainly that would indicate that consumers are, are certainly under a bit of pressure. And in, in our food business, though, we, we're still seeing um, a, a good increase in sales, to be honest, particularly in our pizza business. Just to close off with, uh, in your annual report, you also say that in the medium term, you boldly aim to double your earnings by uh, February of 2014. Is that an, a realistic, achievable target? You know, if we've put it out there, we think it is. Carla Gonzaga, the chief executive of Taste Holdings, and, and uh, I suppose at this point I should disclose that I do hold shares in Taste.